Hey friends, what's up and welcome back to a new video on this channel. Today we are jumping into principle and I know that we haven't been using principle for such a long time, but I'm now really wanting to get back into it to create new animations, design interactions and design transitions. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain, an in-person coding and design bootcamp. And in today's video, we got our UI kit opened up. This UI kit was created in the live streams that I'm doing on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Uh, this is a pretty large UI kit already um, and something as big as that can only be created in a live stream. That's why I thought about why not just creating such a UI kit in the live stream and soon enough this will be available to you for downloading. Um, but right now I would like to focus on a little animation here in the UI kit and we got a couple of screens in here and as you probably have imagined or seen already there is a little transition from uh, the list button the little bubble right here to this menu that is popping up a set of other buttons that is appearing once you tap on the list button and I would like to create a transition for this button try out a few different animations for that and take you with me through the whole process of creating this animation. So the first thing we need to do is to open up principle and of course uh, what's also necessary is to select the screens that I want to import because I don't want to import the whole design for this tutorial. Um, if you created design transition a design animation in principle it can be important to actually also import the whole design but for me for right now i just need uh, a few screens so let's import them hit import the doc document that i'm uh, importing is ui kit and i'm importing the selected artboards and it's importing them and boom here we go we see all of the layers also those layers that are currently hidden uh, because it's uh, scrollable and of course we will also make this design scrollable and yeah let's go all right so what we're gonna do first right here is to make sure that we are using the same uh, we are using a transition for this design and what we actually need to get rid of is this iphone frame because it's blocking our whole access to the document itself now we are able to select the single layers but right here also on our second output we simply see that we cannot grab it um, i will delete it for the purpose of this video right now um, of course we could add it back in later on um, but what this transition all is all about is of course clicking this button so you can actually just select the, the rounded button folder or um, in, the, in the layer list or click on it in your uh, normal interface and next up is uh, hitting this uh, lightning icon and then you can ch uh, change your or select your interaction method uh, I'm going for a tab, that's why I can also just click here and then I want to head over to the second um, artboard and for the back transition I would like to tap it and go back to the first one. Just like that, super easy. <laughs> and let's check out on a little preview here, I will turn this a bit bigger what we can actually see here, like how it's behaving. Um, you see the little preview on the right side is changing regarding to which screen I'm selecting. Um, let's check out what is happening. You see that there's a weird kind of transition going up because of same layer names. That's a big problem when working with principle or maybe not a problem, but also just the basic functionality that is uh, here in principle integrated that is animating our designs because layers that have the same name uh, like interact with each other they they got animated um, that's why we need to change the layer names first to get unique layer names for each of those components so right here we need to analyze it we have a round button folder then we have a shape a list um, shape in there and the oval now let's also uh, analyze our second screen we have the rounded button that's all right um, and then we have a few other buttons in here as well 
And we can already see that on the left side, the rounded button has the oval copy four. And on our uh, right side, we see that the heart button is our oval copy four. That's not good at all. Um, let's make sure we have unique layer names. Let's rename them, rename them first. So this is going to be um, main button BG. And we need to give this one the same name because this is the initial button, even though it's uh, changing its color. Then next up is, this is going to, to be the list icon. We need to give those icons um, a unique name. This is message icon. This one is um, friend icon. And this one is favorite icon. Of course, also give those background layers a, a unique name. Message button BG, friend button BG, and favorite button BG. Now let's uh, check out the animation again. And it's just popping in and out because we don't have uh, same layer names anymore. But we will do that right now. We will figure it out how it works. I will show it to you. If you're new to principle, this is going to be like a really basic tutorial. If you used principle before, um, the part right now that I'm explaining isn't probably super necessary for you. But when it comes to the pure animation, you will have uh, your fun again. <laughs> okay, we have a comment BG, smiley uh, uh, comment button, smiley button, heart button, and the rounded button. Maybe let's let's figure out the round button first if we can try to animate the button right now it's also just plinking in and out even though we gave it the same name uh principle isn't really able to change the fill so for example if i change the fill right here you see the whole area is changing even though the actual button is only uh, this little rounded part and the shadow. So principle can't really handle that. But that's not a problem for us. What we can do is to select all of these, let's say new items or changed items, and then select our first artboard and just paste them in, just like that. Super easy. I'm gonna drag them up a bit so they are actually above our content right here. And these are the new layers that we put that we will put in here. And uh, let's make sure that uh, layer names are still unique. And for the rounded button, we need to make sure that we change the um, that we change the, the, the layer names again. So this is going to be the X icon. And this is main button BG2. And we need to make sure that this is the same also for this one on the second artboard. This is X icon. And this is main button BG2. All right, so what we uh, have to do now is to reposition and uh, customize the, the icons and buttons on our first artboard. What we do now and what I want to achieve with the animation is that those icons and buttons, these pink icon buttons are sliding out from the middle rounded button. So from this position right here, all of those buttons should slide out. So right now they are just stacked on top of each other. Let's make sure that we also change the opacity to zero. And I would like to actually move them below the main button. And this one has to be on top too. Just like that, just hide it for the moment. This one can have a zero opacity as well. Just like that, all right? So this is going to be this is going to be the start. Let's check out what happened if we just click it in our animation panel in our preview.
And you already see that the animation is is kind of kind of good, at least in one way. So this first part, sliding out these uh, buttons and sliding them back in, is happening in a very fluid and uh, like correct way. But if you look closely, if I now tap the X to get back into our first output state, you will see that it's just plinking up like that. That's because I didn't paste in this rounded button into this artboard. If I place it right here and change the opacity to zero, we should now be able to have a very fluent transition be, um, relating to the position of those new buttons and also the opacity of all of those buttons and elements in here, like that. So this is really fluent, very easy, okay? Super fast and fluent. Um, I would like to tune this up a little bit because I think the opacity of these new buttons is fading in too slowly. So that's why you have two different settings here. You have drivers and you have animate, okay? What we do now is to select our animation, the one root of the animations and the animate panel is popping up directly. So next up is a list of different uh, layers and groups that we have right here and the certain setting or um, attribute that is actually animating. And we can change it and we can actually see a preview, a little preview here um, that we can play in slow-mo to get a better impression of the animation and the details of it. So what we will do now is to shorten up the opacity animation part of each of those uh, new buttons. I'm calling them new buttons. And the normal state is 30. That's why we are correcting the opacity part to 0 0.15. 0 0.15, like that. And if we preview it right now, the opacity part is animating much faster and exactly as I want it to be. So that's perfect. That's just how I want it to be. <laughs> um, what I want to do now is to, of course, do the same for the back animation. So we can go in here. We can change the opacity part of the animation. Oh, and I uh, yeah, need to do it for the last one too like that and now it's going and moving in just the same way it's perfect it's very quick and i really love the animation super simple but it it gets a nice advanced feeling like the ui kit and the app that the user will use is getting a, a better more interactive kind of feeling and style and i just enjoy that all right one last thing I would like to do with you right now is that right now the list button or sorry, the list icon, these three stripes and the cross, the X, they aren't animated. They are just changing like the opacity and they have some magic effect to it. But what I would like to do is to actually use the list icon and to flip it in such a in such an X, to turn it in such an, an X icon. To achieve that, what we have to do is to actually really create new rectangles and create a new list icon out of our list icon, right? Um, so I'm creating new layers for that. And I'm giving them a white fill and I just change the size of those um, of those rectangles so that they match the actual normal uh, design. Um, we can also change the radius of it like that. And now this is going to be list one and I'm creating duplications of it because of course I want this to be the same for all of those um, bars. 
So we recreated the list part in here. And what we do now is to copy this part, list one to list three and paste it in here on top of the list icon or on top of uh, yeah, the, the X icon. We need to paste it on top of the X icon because the list icon and rounded button is, um, is not available anymore. What we do now is to create a detailed animation for our stripes. So we can actually get rid of the plus and in here we can also get rid of the list icon because we don't need that anymore. Um, we can also delete it from here and we can delete the X icon from here. So this is really advanced. What we do now is to turn those three stripes into the, the X. And we do that by changing some of its attributes. Um, one of those uh, stripes has to be uh, invisible. So that's why I'm changing the opacity of the middle one to zero. And those two stripes now, uh, but we will do it at, at, at the end because I needed to create the middle of it. But those two stripes, list one and list three, will get a an angle and they need an angle of 45 degrees and then we need to position them in a way that the center is crossing our middle line right so this one has to be uh, a minus 45 degree angle and just like that, if I just now go over to list two and decrease the opacity to zero, it will fade out. And what actually should happen in our design is that the list stripes should animate into such a cross into the X icon. So let me show this to you. If I select our first output right now and I'm clicking the button right here, we can see that there is an animation happening in here. I will create a magnification for you guys. So for me, it's not 100% visible because I need to hover it. But I will, uh, in post-processing the video, I will create a little magnification um, effect so you can actually check out the animation from the list icon to the X icon, to the clothing icon. And I think it looks pretty awesome that this is animated. I think that's a very beautiful effect. And you can see those little animation uh, parts of your UI and UX can be created in such a easy and fast way. And I hope you enjoyed this small video of showing you this animation. Uh, I will. I would love to actually do more of these videos, these animation parts of my UI kit and other UIs in the future. If you enjoyed this, hit the thumb up button and also, of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We see us in future live streams or future videos and I would just want to thank you for your time and yeah, goodbye. Dev Mountain offers housing at no extra cost for immersive students and they have a career services team to help with job placements. Dev Mountain would love to hear from you so be sure to click the link in the video description if you or somebody you know is ready to dive into the UX design program.